I was dreaming. Since I was young, there have been moments during dreams when I suddenly realize I'm indeed dreaming. This was one of those times. For some reason, I found myself alone at a dimly lit, deserted station. I thought to myself, what a gloomily odd dream this is. Then, suddenly, an announcement was made in the station by a man's voice, devoid of vitality. It was bizarre, saying, a train will arrive soon. If you board it, you will experience something terrifying. Soon enough, a train pulled into the station. Rather than a conventional train, it resembled the monkey trains commonly found in amusement parks, with several pal-faced men and women seated in a row. Though I found the dream peculiar, curiosity about how much fear it could instill in me took over, and I decided to board the train. I thought, if it becomes unbearably scary, I can always wake up. I've always been able to wake up from dreams at will whenever I'm aware that I'm dreaming. Taking a seat in the third row from the back of the train, the atmosphere was oddly warm and tangible, making me question its dreamlike state. As the announcement, departing now, was made, the train began moving. I felt a mix of apprehension and anticipation about what would happen next. Immediately after leaving the platform, the train entered a tunnel illuminated by a purplish light, casting an eerie glow. I reflected, this tunnel scene reminds me of the thrill rides I took as a child at amusement parks. This train is just like the monkey trains, and it all just seems to borrow images from my past memories. It isn't scary at all. Then, another announcement came, next stop, sashimi, sashimi. Sashimi? A fish? While pondering this, a piercing scream from behind startled me. Turning around, I saw a man seated at the very back, surrounded by four dwarf-like beings in tattered cloths. Upon closer inspection, the man was being sliced up with a blade, turned into sashimi like a fish, amidst a potent stench surrounding the area. He screamed relentlessly, his body being dissected and his blood-covered organs scattered around. A pale-faced woman with long hair sat just behind me, completely indifferent to the chaos unfolding behind her, silently staring straight ahead. Overwhelmed by the unexpected turn of events, I began to question if this was truly a dream and grew frightened, deciding to watch a bit longer before waking up. Upon looking back, the man in the rear seat had disappeared, leaving behind a gruesome mix of blood and flesh. The woman behind me remained expressionless, fixated on a single point. The next announcement, now, scooping out, scooping out, ensued. This time, two dwarfs appeared, beginning to scoop out the eyes of the woman behind me with spoon-like objects. Her previously impassive face contorted in pain as she let out screams so loud they felt like they could rupture my eardrums, her eyeballs protruding from their sockets. The smell of blood and sweat became unbearable. Trembling with fear, I faced forward and hunched over, thinking it was time to leave this nightmare. I couldn't endure it any longer, especially since it would soon be my turn, sitting in the third row. Attempting to wake from the dream, I wondered about the announcement that would signify my turn, deciding to check before escaping. The next is grinding, grinding, the announcement came. The worst possible scenario. Imagining the outcome, I concentrated all my nerves to wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Usually, strongly willing myself would work. Suddenly, a mechanical humming sound approached. A dwarf climbed onto my lap with a strange device, seemingly designed to mince me. Terrified at the thought, I squeezed my eyes shut and willed intensely, wake up, wake up, wake up. The humming grew louder, and feeling the air pressure on my face, I thought it was the end when everything abruptly quieted down. By some miracle, I escaped the nightmare. Soaked in sweat and tears streaming down my face, I went to the kitchen and drank a lot of water, finally calming down. Though terrifyingly realistic, I reminded myself it was just a dream. The next day, I shared the dream with my friends at school, but they only found it amusing. It was just a dream, after all. Four years passed. Now a university student who had all but forgotten this incident, I was busy with part-time jobs. 
Then suddenly, one night, it began again. Next, scooping out, scooping out. It resumed from that scene. Instantly recalling that nightmare, I started willing myself to wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. This time, however, waking up was not as easy. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Next is grinding, grinding. The situation turned desperate. The humming approached. Wake up, wake up, wake up, please wake up. Suddenly, it went silent. Somehow, I had managed to escape again, thinking I was about to open my eyes when I heard clearly, running away again? The next time you come will be the last. Opening my eyes, I found myself fully awake in my room. The last announcement I heard was undoubtedly not part of the dream. I heard it for real, in this world. What on earth had I done? Since then, I haven't experienced that dream again, but I'm prepared that if it occurs next time, I might die of a heart attack or something. In this world, it may be a heart attack, but in that world, it's grinding. How was it, everyone? A dream about minced meat, scarier than a heart attack. Just imagining it can keep you awake, right? But don't worry, it was just a dream, wasn't it? If it's a dream, it's okay once you wake up. Well then, good night. May your next dream be more peaceful.